The last few months have given New Yorkers an insight into what a future with climate change may hold. Rising sea levels and more severe storms threaten the city's 8 million inhabitants. On the southern edge of New York City, the Rockaway Peninsula was devastated by Hurricane Sandy in 2012 and now has flood barriers along most of the shoreline. But campaigners say more is needed to protect this vital area. The Rockaway Peninsula really is a protective barrier for the rest of the city, right, to Brooklyn, to JFK Airport. But then you also have 150,000 people living on it year round. City officials are listening to concerns. Work has begun on a $1.45 billion scheme to build flood defences along the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And the mayor announced a $110 million project to protect the South Street seaport area from rising sea levels. But the challenges of adapting an ageing, built-up city were highlighted in a recent report on the impact of this year's Hurricane Ida, which revealed upgrading sewage and drainage systems would cost approximately $100 billion and take decades to modernise it. So steps are being taken to address the root cause of climate change. New York City leaders have announced a commitment to a net zero emissions goal in their public pension funds by 2040. Plans for two natural gas power plants in the city were recently rejected because of the environmental impact. And restaurants and cafes are now banned from giving out plastic cutlery and straws unless customers specifically ask for them. But experts in urban planning say global warming is now an inevitability that has to be prepared for. It's too late. <laughs> you know, we've already reached a point where there's, you know, at least 50 years of warming, even if we stopped emitting greenhouse gases today. There's still a range of possible futures. Um, and the more we emit, the worse it gets. So I do think that one really important role for cities is political advocacy um, and pressuring higher levels of government to act. And campaigners say engaging local communities is key. Well, because local knowledge. If somebody collectively knows that, you know, at the end of their street is where that water rises, engaging people and having them work together goes beyond just protecting their shoreline, but creating memorable experiences, especially in the midst of COVID when you have a lot of people who haven't been able to connect. With the New York City panel on climate change predicting a sea level rise of up to two and a half feet here by 2050, the need to act is becoming more and more urgent. Sarah Walton, CGTN, New York.